In the history of English football, a few names transcend the statistics and score sheets to become legends of the game. These are men whose reputations are built not just on their talent, but on an intangible quality that is harder to define. The ability to intimidate, to command respect, and to instill a measure of fear in both opponents and teammates alike. Billy Whitehurst was one such player. His story is not just about football, it is a tale of a man whose mere presence could shift the psychological balance of a game, a man whose legend loomed large both on and off the pitch. The early 1990s were a tumultuous yet thrilling period for Sheffield United. Under the stewardship of the indefatigable Dave Bassett, the Blades were a side that defied convention and expectation. They didn't have the riches of the Manchester clubs or the allure of Liverpool, but what they did possess was an uncompromising will to compete, a rugged determination that mirrored the steel city from which they hailed. In this cauldron of grit and graft, Billy Whitehurst found his calling. Whitehurst arrived at Bramall Lane at a pivotal moment. Bassett, known for his shrewdness and keen understanding of the game's psychological undercurrents, recognized that his team, while formidable, needed a touch of menace to truly unsettle their opponents. Enter Whitehurst, a player who was as much feared for his physical presence as he was respected for his on-field abilities. Brian Dean was one of the jewels in United's crown, a striker who, despite his imposing frame, was known for his finesse rather than his ferocity. It didn't take long for opposition defenders to identify Dean as a key threat, and they often resorted to physical tactics to neutralize him. It was during these skirmishes that Whitehurst's role as a guardian angel became evident. A story often recounted among those who played during that era tells of a match against Notts County where Dean, after enduring a torrent of rough challenges from Nicky Law, snapped. He retaliated, an unusual sight given his calm demeanor, and was subsequently sent off. United, playing with ten men, still managed a resounding four-to-one victory. The tale captures not just Dean's breaking point, but also the growing recognition that he needed someone like Whitehurst by his side to keep the Wolves at bay. Recognizing this, Bassett deployed Whitehurst as Dean's protector, a footballing bodyguard whose reputation alone was often enough to discourage the most cynical of challenges. His role was clear. He wasn't just there to score goals. He was there to make sure his teammates could play their game without undue fear of retribution from their opponents. The legend of Billy Whitehurst is punctuated by stories that over time have become almost mythical. One such anecdote, often recounted in hushed tones and with a sense of awe, occurred at Bramall Lane during a particularly bruising encounter with Liverpool. Neil Ruddock, a defender with a reputation for playing on the edge, had been harrying Dean throughout the first half, testing both his patience and his resolve. At halftime, Bassett, ever the tactician, called upon Whitehurst who was not even in the squad that day, but rather watching from the stands. The instructions were simple yet effective. Confront Ruddock in the tunnel, remind him of the consequences of his actions. As the story goes, Whitehurst approached the Liverpool defender with a quiet menace, his words sharp and unmistakable. Kick Deansy once more, and I'm going to twat you after the match. Ruddock, typically unfazed, found himself uncharacteristically silent and compliant in the face of Whitehurst's threat. The second half saw a noticeable decrease in his enthusiasm for roughhousing. Years later, in a rare moment of reflection, Ruddock himself would confirm the incident in an interview, admitting that the sight of Whitehurst in his suit, still exuding an aura of raw power, was enough to dissuade him from his earlier tactics. He scared the life out of me, Ruddock confessed a testament to the psychological hold Whitehurst had over his contemporaries. If the story of the tunnel was not enough to cement Whitehurst's place in the pantheon of football hard men, there were countless other tales that followed him wherever he went. Alan Hansen, a player whose own career was marked by its elegance and composure, once admitted that the sight of Whitehurst on a team sheet filled him with genuine fear. He frightened me, Hansen would later write capturing a sentiment that was shared by many defenders of the era. Paul Lake, another of Whitehurst's contemporaries, recounted an incident where a stray elbow in a match left him in dread, only to realize the unfortunate recipient was none other than Whitehurst himself. Oh Christ, anyone but that fucking monster, Lake thought, 
summing up the universal dread felt by those who dared cross him. Even Niall Quinn, a man not easily intimidated, recalled an encounter with Whitehurst that left him eager to pass on the responsibility of marking him at a corner. The legend of Billy Whitehurst was such that even his peers, men who were themselves not shy of physical confrontation, would often look to avoid his ire. But Whitehurst's aura was not confined to the pitch. His presence was felt off it as well, where his fearsome reputation followed him like a shadow. The story of his encounter with a Sheffield Wednesday fan in a nightclub, where he reportedly dispatched the offending supporter with a punch that Vinnie Jones himself described as one of the best right-handers I've ever seen, only added to the folklore. This was a man whose life was lived on the edge, where every confrontation, whether on grass or concrete, was treated with the same seriousness and intensity. Even Vinnie Jones, a player who would later become synonymous with football's darker arts, deferred to Whitehurst. During a speaking tour, when asked what it was like to be the hardest man in football, Jones pointed to Whitehurst in the audience and replied, you best ask that man. The tale of Billy Whitehurst is one of an era now long past, a time when football was as much about intimidation as it was about skill. In a game that has become increasingly sanitized and controlled, the likes of Whitehurst serve as a reminder of a raw, more visceral period. His legacy is not just in the stories that are told, but in the impact he had on the game and its players. He was a guardian, a protector, and an enforcer. A man who played the game on his terms and left an indelible mark on all who crossed his path. In the words of Harry Redknapp, perhaps summarizing the sentiment best, whatever you do, stay away from that lunatic Billy Whitehurst. That warning, delivered with a mix of admiration and genuine fear, captures the essence of a man whose name still evokes a shiver down the spine of those who remember his era.